Hey YouTube and welcome back to my show. How are we doing amigos? My name's Phil. Thank you all so much for tuning in. That transition there was really smooth. Even my new scenery didn't move in the wind whatsoever. <laughs> welcome back to my show. We're here today to talk about all things football. We're going to talk about last week's results and some international matches. But let's first of all start off with Chelsea against Sheffield United. 4-1 guys. A cheer from everyone at home. Go. <laughs> Yep, uh, a boo do. Thanks for the booze, guys. Cheers. 4-1. <laughs> what a result for Chelsea. Gown 1-0 down against Sheffield United is never easy to come back from. We know they're a well-run club. They've got a great manager. They've got great supporters, great players. They've got great backroom staff. They did so well in the Premiership last season, and they deserve to. They were Chelsea's bogey team. And I kind of thought, Gown 1-0 down, I thought, I can't see Chelsea now. Where they are going to go in this game? But after that, they got level and they put on a masterclass. It was pure poetry in motion. Their back four, Thiago Silva, he's just breathing his confidence. You know, we've got Zuma playing great football now, even getting up there scoring goals. Rhys James is possibly the best right back in the Premiership. Cheerwell, what a signing he's proven to be. Mendy, the signing of the season. For me, Mendy is the signing of the season. Everything about him, his distribution, the way he commands his goal area, the way he comes out for crosses, corners, shot stopping. I now believe that the whole of Chelsea can rely on him, which then breeds more confidence. You look at Chelsea's midfield, Hakam Ziyech. He is an absolute steal. The, the, a, lot of, a lot of pundits were talking about, you know, his crosses, the way he just pings that ball in. But for me, it was how calm he is on the ball. He's so skillful. I believe if Chelsea keep him injury free, he potentially could be Chelsea's player of the season. Then we go to Kovacic, who was Chelsea's player of the season, who, last season, who got in the team for the Sheffield United game. I just hope Lampard keeps him in over Jorginho. I believe Jorginho is a great player, but Kovacic is better in my opinion. When Jorginho has got the ball, he's got this bad habit, for me anyway, this is my opinion, of always playing the ball back. He always plays the ball back. Kovacic gets that ball, he looks up, he's looking at uh, Timo, he's looking at Ziyech, he's looking at Mason Mount, he wants to get that ball out there, he's peeing it out there, he's looking at Abraham, the target man, he's trying to make things happen for Chelsea, he's skillful, he defends well, he kind of looks up, he, he, he reads the game better than most players I've seen at Chelsea. I believe when he plays with Kante as well, Kante just can kind of keep that back four safe and kind of let Kovacic push on. For me, I keep Kovacic in the team. There's a reason why he was player of the season last season, and that was there to be seen against Sheffield United. You look at Timo Werner now, is he getting that confidence back? You know, he's scoring goals now, and he's now Chelsea's penalty taker, which I, I'm happy about. Could he get 20 goals this season? Maybe 25, maybe even 30. 30 is most probably pushing it a bit, but I definitely think he can get about 20 goals. You're seeing Abraham play great football now as well, and I think that's being around Giroud. Who you know, guys at home, I'm a Giroud fanboy, but I think he's got that Giroud element about him, which can only be a good thing. You can imagine Giroud in training, just passing on all his knowledge to Tammy. Is Tammy Chelsea's future forward? I believe so, but I just don't know how they're going to mix him and Timo. Are they going to keep Timo out on the wing? Seem, it seems to be working at the moment, but um, Chelsea look great, and I believe they're going to be up there. Can they win the league? I want to say yes, and you know, this new formation that we know is working for them, but I just don't know. Can they do well in the Champions League? I think so. Can they do well in the FA Cup? I hope so. I, I, I just want Chelsea to win something this year, but Lampard is the man for Chelsea. And now they seem to be gelling. I think Chelsea are going to be a force. But let's talk about other teams who potentially could be up there at the end of the season. And even potentially winning the league. Tottenham. I know, right? Could they win the Premiership? Yeah, I think they could. And I think they probably have got a really good chance of doing so. I believe that Mourinho has really kind of found that old form. He looks confident. The players want to play for him, which is a big thing, guys. We, we know that in football. When you've got the players on your side, you can achieve wonderful things. Harry Kane and Song up front. Wow. Gareth Bale. Will Tottenham be in the top three at the end of the season? 100%. Will they win the league? Uh, if, I, if I was a betting man, I do like a bit of a bet. I might have a bet on Tottenham to be up there or thereabouts. I'm not going to say they are going to win it, but they're definitely going to be up there. Leicester. 
Vardy's found this new form. You know, you look at Leicester. Could Leicester be in top four? I, yes, I believe they could. I was so gutted that they didn't finish top four last season. I know Chelsea got Chelsea come fourth, and then it was United who were third. You, I, I thought United should have had that fifth spot. And I'm not a Man United hate because I think Man United are a great team, guys. But they just come back after that crazy break of COVID. They played well, and Leicester seemed to have dropped their form a bit last season. But this season. They're kind of showing that form that they had last year. Brendan Rodgers is a, is a great manager. Could they be up the top half of the table, getting a Champions League spot? I believe so. You know, the Premier League this year is really open. Then you look at Aston Villa. Who I'm a big fan of Villa. I like the way they run their club, from their backroom staff to their supporters to their players to their manager, Dean Smith. You know, you've got John Terry in there. Ollie Watkins is going to prove to be for them one of the signings of the season and maybe the signing of the season for the Premiership I hope he kind of starts for England starts scoring goals because he's a great player guys he will get about 20 to 25 goals this season and could Villa be in the top half of the table yes they look great Barkley's playing great football I, I just I, the only thing that worries me about Villa is them kind of staying injury free which I think they will and if they do so could they potentially finish top 5 top 6 yeah I do then you've got Wolves they've not started great but don't write them off Palace look brilliant they look brilliant now Scott Dan's at the back one of my favourite centre backs um, I'd like to see him you know getting an international call at, at Scott Dan's is great please correct me if I'm wrong is he in the setup? I don't think he's in the England setup. Scott Dan's Great footballer. Roy Hodgson, he seems to be getting better with age as a manager. I know he's in his 70s now, but there's no time, any time soon that he's going to be slowing down. But overall, I think the Premiership is in a really good bit of health. I know the, the fans can't be in the stadiums at the moment, but hopefully now with a vaccine and while we're in lockdown, you know, you kind of look to spring. Could we get fans back in the back in the stadiums, maybe not at full capacity and socially distant. So I hope they do because the fans need to be back supporting their clubs, especially for the grassroots teams from the third division, second division, first division. They rely on supporters to make the club tick, to pay the players, to to pay the whole of the staff. So I'm hoping that we, you know, with the vaccine, hopefully the, the, the cases of COVID start coming down and fans can start enjoying football again from grassroots up to the Premiership is, is much needed. But um, thank you all so much, guys, for tuning in for my uh, me on my football take. Uh, it's been good. And, oh, yeah, I forgot as well. Sorry, guys, we were going to talk about some international matches as well. Scotland qualifying, get in there. I love Scotland. Scotland is one of my favourite countries. Scotland qualifying was just amazing. I was cheering, winning on penalties, beating Serbia. I was literally watching it with my kilt on, going, go on, Scotland. So I'm really happy Scotland are through. England look good. I think, I, I don't know how well they're going to do uh, next year, guys, England. I think Gareth needs to find his 11. But I do believe he's still the man for England and I do believe that once we kind of get out of this weird time for football, things will start ticking for England. But uh, yeah, well done Scotland. I was really, really happy. Thank you all so much guys for tuning in. We're going to be coming back with more sports talks and boxing, some UFC stuff, some more football. Me just being a bit goofy. Yeah, we're going to have lots of fun coming your way very, very soon guys. But cheers for stopping by guys and we'll see you all soon. Cheers amigos. Thank you.